Hi friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to yet another video on UGC Net Paper 1. On popular demand, I'm back again with a video on research aptitude. This unit is said to be one of the most difficult units of Paper 1. And this video is not just a regular video. It's a crash course wherein we will cover all important topics that you must study to ace unit number 2 research aptitude for UGC Net Paper 1. My aim behind making this video is to tell all my viewers which topics you should study and which topics you should skip when preparing for UGC NET exam. In less than 15 minutes, I'm going to take you through all the important sections of this unit one by one. This video will act as a blueprint and lay a strong solid foundation which will in turn help you to cover this unit in very very short time. By the way, do you know that I do one activity every morning and that activity is meditation. And why do I do that? Because I recently read a research paper which said that stress can lead to cancer. Hence, it is very important for me to keep myself stress-free throughout the day. If you two are preparing for UGC net JRF and you all are under stress, then be aware of it because the exam stress that you are taking can lead to cancer. So, did you just notice what we did? We took help of a research and this is how research can help us to make a better life decision, better life choices. Also, there are many students who find this unit challenging and they keep on asking one thing. Why is there a need to know this topic research aptitude and why the hell is this unit a part of our paper one curriculum? I would like to tell you guys that paper one is a general paper that all UGC net students have to give. And a student who is clearing this paper usually has a goal of becoming a professor or to further continue and do their PhD. This is what makes research an important topic in paper one curriculum. It is added to give basic overview of the field of research to a student. If a student is already familiar with research methodology, types of research, it would be a cakewalk for him or her to pursue their PhD. So in this video, I'm going to look at all the major areas which you need to cover in the unit research aptitude if you are preparing for UGC NET paper one. So let's get started. The very first topic that you must study in this unit is what is research? And what is the nature of research? Research is a systematic and logical procedure that is done in order to get answers to certain questions. For example, I might have a question in my mind about who is more responsible between the elder sibling and the younger sibling. Is it the elder one or is it the younger one? In order to get an answer for this question, I will undertake research under which I will take a bunch of elder and younger siblings and then see who is showing more responsible behavior. And after successful research, I will get an answer. The next topic that you must cover is nature of research. In this we talk about how a good research should be. Number one, research should be scientific. Why scientific? Because if one fine day I just decide to do a research without following any set procedure, then it won't give us reliable results. There needs to be a set procedure which we all should follow when we are doing a research. Hence, it should be scientific. Also, research is a systematic process. Research is done step by step. It's never like pehle analysis kar lo, fir data collection karte. It will always start with data collection and then will lead to analysis of the data. Thus, a systematic step-by-step -step procedure must be followed. And then the most important thing, research should be verifiable. Now, what's that? Any research which has been done previously can be verified easily, can be replicated. That is what is known by verifiable research. The person can use my theory is data that I have collected in my research and can verify whether my findings are true or not. This is what makes a successful research. So this is what research is all about. Thus, if anyone wants to do a research, they should be clear about what is research and what is the nature of the research. 
By the way, if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that every Sunday, as soon as I upload a new video, you are the first one to know about it. We're proud to share that we are India's largest YouTube channel right now in the field of UGC net exam preparation. Moving on. So after looking at what is research, what is the nature of research, the next important thing that you need to understand is objective of research. There is an objective behind every research. Government spends hundreds and thousands of rupees every year on research and development. And they do that for the progress of nation and mankind. So, kuch to objective hoga har research ke pehle. The first and foremost objective of research is to achieve new insights. Research is very important if we want to develop a new theory or a new technique. For example, in the beginning of the video, we spoke about how stress can lead to cancer. Because of this research, we got to know about the link between two factors. This is how research helps in providing new insights. Another important objective of research is that it helps in generalization. For example, let's say I took 50 siblings as a part of my research to determine who is more responsible, elder or younger. The result of my research said that the elder sibling is more responsible. Now, through the result, I can actually generalize this to a large group of population. Though the research was obtained out of a group of only 50 kids. But yes, after my research, I can generalize my finding saying that elder siblings are more responsible in every scenario. So I can generalize it to the entire world population. The result of my research will apply in case of all the elder and younger sibling bond across the world. Why is that? This is because of generalization. Because I've generalized my research finding, the result stands true for the entire universe. This is how research helps in reaching new generalization. Last but not least, another important objective of research is that research helps you to know the connection between two non-interlinked variables. For example, there are two independent variables. Let's say obesity and laziness. In dono ke beech mein to koi connection nahi hai. Once we do a research on these two variables, we find out that there's a link between obesity and laziness. And this is how we find a connection between two interlinked variables and why are these two variables connected. The next important topic that you must study in this unit is what are the types of variables. But before knowing that, what are the types of variable, it is important to know what is a variable. I believe you must have studied math once in your student life, right? There was a topic of algebra, if you remember, that consists of constant and variables. Okay, now what are these constants? These are numeric values like 2, 5, 7, 10, 25, 340. Variables are values that varies in every question, like x, y, z. Hum jab bolte te, x ki value find out karo. So that value of x varies in every question. Kisi question mein x ki value is 5, kisi mein 10, kisi mein 360, kisi mein 475. So that kind of varies. So variables are anything which vary. Constant is a numeric value which remains constant throughout the question, throughout the entire subject of maths. Now, if you look at the types of variable, you'll find out that there are may, many, many types of variables. Uh, for example, if I want to find out the impact of sleep deprivation on test performance of a student, I would undertake a research where I will have two variables. One of them is independent variable and the other one is dependent variable. Now, if you are smart enough, pause this video right now and comment below which one according to you is independent and which one according to you is dependent variable in case of a research that is done on test performance and sleep deprivation. Independent variable is the one, the value of which we can vary. Uh, if I am taking, for example, the sleep deprivation and test performance wala research, I am going to take a sample size of about 50 students. Now out of these 50 students, I am going to uh, ensure that 25 students get good amount of sleep night before the exam. And the second group students will not get any sleep. 
So what I am varying in both the groups? I am varying the amount of sleep they are having. So sleep in this case is an independent variable. The next kind of variable is dependent variable. Now as the term suggests, dependent variable is the variable which is dependent hai on the independent variable. So in this experiment that we are talking about, test performance is a dependent variable. Test performance cannot be varied. We cannot vary test performance. It is measured. The test performance is linked to an independent variable that is amount of sleep a student has got. So we vary amount of sleep and then we see the result of the dependent variable. And therefore, that is the reason why it is known as dependent variable. The value of test performance, which is dependent variable, uh, the value depends on the independent variable, which is sleep. Another variable in research methodology is extraneous variable. Now, what are extraneous variables? There are other factors other than independent variable that affects the outcome of the research. For example, uh, out of these 50 students that we researched on, there was one student who slept properly before the exam, but was suffering from fever. So he did not score good marks. Now here, suffering from fever is an extraneous variable. It influences the test score. It is not the independent variable. We don't measure it. But this is a factor that comes out from the outside, which influences our dependent variable. And we don't measure it. So those kind of variables that impact our research without being an independent variable are known as extraneous variable. By the way, before we move ahead, if you are looking for B.Ed, UGC Net, MA, PhD entrance, TGT, PGT exam updates, then please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. You could find us on these social media platforms using our username Arpita Karwa. We regularly post study tips, free study material on our Facebook and Insta pages. Moreover, every Wednesday, we also share quick revision reels on these pages, which will help you revise important topics in less than 60 seconds. So now let's move on to the next topic that you should study for UGC net exam, especially when it comes to unit two research methodology and it is hypothesis and the types of hypothesis. Now what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is tentative answer to a question. It can also mean a proposed explanation to a research question. For example, if we research the link between stress and cancer, I might have a tentative answer in my mind before even starting the research that stress is directly linked to cancer. Suppose my mind has an answer in my research shuru karne se pehle. But after researching several people who are living in a stressful life and still did not get cancer, I might come up with an answer that stress and cancer does not have any link between them. Many people with stress do not get cancer and many stress-free people have got cancer. That means stress and cancer do not have any link between them. And my tentative answer was wrong. Thus, a hypothesis is a tentative answer to a problem which you kind of devise before starting the research. And this particular answer can either be proved right or wrong after the research. There are various types of hypothesis. For example, one common hypothesis is null hypothesis. Null means no. So null hypothesis is very simple. It says that there is no link between the two variables, independent or dependent variable ke beech mein koi connection nahi hai. That means no connection between the variables, just like in case of our example, null hypothesis would be, there is no connection between stress and cancer. There are a lot of other hypotheses which you need to know before you sit for UGC NET exam. We cover all of them in detail in our online video course for UGC NET Paper 1. If you are preparing for UGC NET Paper 1 or Paper 2, I have some amazing news for you. We offer four separate video courses for UGC NET Paper 1 and UGC NET Paper 2 uh, for English, Commerce and Management. In all our online courses, we provide you with topic-wise video lessons with rich animations covering all all the topics in a step-by-step -step manner which works even when you've not done any previous preparation. We also provide you high quality PDF and revision notes that cover syllabus wise topics comprehensively and ensure you qualify your dream exam in just one attempt. 
Along with video lectures and PDF, we also offer test series that consists of more than 3000 unit wise questions that comes with detailed explanation. Plus after every test you get a detailed performance report and your ranking in all India leaderboard which will help you spot your weak and strong areas. We cover all important topics, writers and works in our online course. The detailed list of all our online course topics are covered uh, in our website free of cost uh, that is arpatakarva.com. If you are preparing for these exams on your own, we would highly recommend you to visit our website and download this detailed list of topics and check out the solved previous year papers of all these competitive exams. The link of our website and all the courses that we offer is given in the description box below. You can check out the course details of our website uh, and even watch free demo lectures, attempt free demo mock tests before you decide to enroll in our course. For more information regarding the courses we offer, feel free to shoot your queries on the WhatsApp number displayed on your screen and me and my team will be more than happy to assist you. The next important thing about research that you must cover for UGC NET Paper 1 is types of research. So we all know that there are various types of research. Experimentation is one such research. Experiments are done when you go to a laboratory and then you do a research in a controlled environment. All the factors are controlled. On the other hand, there is another kind of research which is observational research. So observational research is done in a very simple normal setting. For example, if I want to do some research on animals, I might go to a zoo and then observe the animals from a distance and do my research. Another important type of research is ex post facto research. Now this particular research has been asked so many times in NET exam. So ensure that you know this research in depth. Ex post facto research is where you target the people who have already been through that particular condition. For example, uh, if we talk about a researcher who wants to determine cause and effect relationship between height and IQ score. Now, a researcher cannot physically alter someone's height, right? I can't increase his height to his height. Therefore, specific groups will be put together based on how tall they are. So, what will I do in this research? I will take different sets of people, some who have a height and some who have a height. And then I will evaluate their IQ. I can't take this one group, some people have a height and some people have a height, and some people have a height and some people have a height and then research. That is not possible, right? So, I take these participants who are already independent variables. The next important thing that you must study are the tools of research. Just like you need tools to build a building or a piece of furniture, you need several tools which will help you in your research. So one such tool is interview. If I'm doing a research whether today's youth like old retro songs, I can use interview as a tool to know their opinion about retro songs. I can go to young people, ask them their opinions, note it down and then publish the finding of my research. Similarly, another research tool is questionnaire, which is uh, something that we use if population size is very, very large. If I want to research what kind of movies students of this generation likes to watch, I will make a questionnaire, give it to a set of young people. After getting the result of the questionnaire, the data will give out new insights about students and their liking for movies. Uh, for example, we will understand how many students like science fiction movies, how many of them are inclined towards family melodrama. You might also find based on the answers of your questionnaire, how many students are inclined towards comedy or action. So questionnaire is a great tool which will help you to collect data for your research. Another important type of tool is survey. It is used if research is to be done on a very, very large population. If a country has to implement a new law or a new act, then the best way to do is survey. Another important research tool is projective test. It is connected to psychology. So there are a lot of tests which can give details about the subconscious or repressed desires of a person. For example, there's a very famous test called Rorschach ink blot test. Now in this test, you will be shown few pictures and based on your interpretation of the pictures, you need to write a story or you have to describe what's happening in the picture. Now that is a very subjective thing. Har insaan ko kuch alag dikhega us picture mein. Now when a psychologist 
studies your answer, he will understand those repressed desires that are there inside you and those suppressed emotions that are there inside you. And this is how he gets to know about the underlying traits. So this is another kind of research tool. The next important topic that you must study is sampling and the types of sampling. Now what is a sample? I am going to explain this by giving you a simple example. A researcher wants to research on how many hours an average student plays video games daily. Now this becomes really impossible because millions and millions of students are there who play video games and I cannot collect data from all over the world. This will be an impossible task. So what do I do as a researcher? I am going to do a very simple thing. I will take sample. Suppose there are 1 million students. I as a researcher will take a small part of it for say 10,000 students and I am going to do research on them and whatever research I will get, I will generalize it on the entire 1 million students. Population is the entire set of people on which research should be done but the research is done on a sample which is a part of the entire population. The result obtained from the sample is then generalized on the entire population. Now there are various ways to get samples. One simple way is lucky draw jaise hum karte hain. Suppose we select random 10,000 students from all the students out there in the world and research on those people and then generalize their finding. So in this case consider these 10,000 students to represent the entire population. This is called simple random sampling. Another better way to do sampling is by systematic random sampling. In this, I arrange the students in one row. Then I take up every 10th student. Every 10th student that is picked up is selected for the research like 10th number of student, 20th page of student, 30th number page of student and so on. Another type of sampling is cluster sampling. When your population is very big, so then what you do is you divide your population into clusters and then choose a few clusters as your sample. For example, in case I want to know the impact of video games and school students in India, I would choose 10 students, uh, 10 schools randomly and research on the students that belong to those 10 schools. These 10 schools are known as clusters. So that is cluster sampling. It just means that you are using naturally existing clusters for your research. Friends, these are few important ways in which you can take uh, a sample for your research. If you found this video helpful so far, then please like this video by giving it a big fan thumbs up and also share it with other fellow aspirants who are struggling with similar kind of questions. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is the importance of ethics in research methodology. Research is a very noble work, friends. Many people who are into research often get aid from the government. Even the people around them support them if they are doing a research. Along with being such a noble act, research is also a very responsible act. There are some ethical rules and regulations that a researcher should follow. For example, it is the duty of the researcher that the information collected by him should remain confidential. If I am giving my private information to a researcher for the sake of his research, he should take care that my information should not be leaked. Similarly, the participation in research shall always be voluntary. No researcher can force anyone to participate in their research. Participants should be given the freedom to withdraw at any point from the research. We also have to ensure that no harm is caused to the participants while conducting the research. You should also know that all the important research ethics are asked in net exam very frequently. So ensure that you time to study this topic. The next topic that you must study in detail is about thesis writing. After doing the research, it is very important for the researcher to present the research findings properly. This presentation is called thesis writing. There is a set format for the thesis writing which any researcher needs to follow. First, you need to mention the title of your research. Then you need to talk about the abstract in which you basically give a synopsis or summary of your research. Then the next thing you talk about is the literature review. What have you studied, what have you studied, what research have you studied on this topic? And then why do you want to research on this topic? 
Then you talk about the method that you have used in order to conduct your research. Finally, you disclose the results and after the result, you have a discussion. Then there's a separate section of appendix and then finally you have a section of reference where you mention all the sources that you have referred to in your research. So this is a set procedure which you need to follow whenever you are drafting a thesis. Remember this procedure very, very uh, cautiously because in UGC net exam several times they give these steps in jumbled format and they ask you to put them in the right order. Last but not the least, we will be looking at some of the most important statistical area in the unit research methodology that you need to touch upon when you're preparing for UGC net paper one. There's a portion called hypothesis testing which involves terms like t-test, f-test, chi-square and you must be aware of all these terms. You must also look into normal distribution curve and terms associated with it such as cutosis, skewness. Cutosis basically means the peakness of a curve. When you plot the finding of the research on a graph paper, you get a curve, right? The peakness of that curve is cutosis. It is done to find that peak of the curve. Then there's another term called skewness, which indicates the symmetry of the curve. Is it inclined towards left? Is it inclined towards right? Is it in the center? That kind of thing is skewness. So these are some important terms which might be asked in the upcoming UGC net exam as they were asked in the previous year papers too. So if you are looking for past year papers of UGC net paper one, then we invite you to visit our website right now. We have provided past 10 years papers along with answer key free of cost on our website. You can simply go download those papers and start your preparation right away. So that's it for this video lecture. I try to incorporate all the important areas which are important in research methodology. So do make sure that you read the important areas and you prepare accordingly. As I've already told you, we cover all these topics in detail in our online course. You can even join our online course. I'm quite eager to know how you felt about this video. Did you like it, not like it? Did you find it helpful? Please share your views in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions, any doubts, or if you want me to make a video on any other topic, feel free to put that too in the comment section below. So that's it from my side for this video lecture. I'll meet you very, very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.